Good afternoon. Welcome to another Telepost Game of the Week. Um, although the weekliness of these might be uh, has been subject to change lately. Um, for today, uh, when I started doing these, I always wanted to show games from across the um, whole range of players in the club, including some players who are of a sort of um, who are lower rated than me. Um, so far, generally, the games have been sort of on the higher end of, uh, of the club's players by rating. Um, but today I want to show this fighting game between uh, Shane Sweeney with the white pieces and Andrew Jones with the black pieces um, in the uh, Newport C versus Telepost D match in the Shropshire League. Um, so, um, this game started with e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Russell Limo Sicilian. So as much a main line today as the open Sicilian is. Um, however, after 3a6, the main move is uh, bishop takes c6, b takes c6. Um, However, here Shane made a potentially game losing mistake immediately to bishop a4. So the immediate response from black, b5. And then you can see that after bishop b3, c4 would come and simply trap the white bishop, allowing it to be taken. Um, just to sort of front load the educational content here. Um, I thought I'd show a couple of other variations where you see the same kind of uh, trap take place. The well, first is this uh, advanced variation of the Karakhan, h4, the toll variation. And after e6, which is a game losing mistake, g4, wherever the bishop runs, it suddenly finds itself uh, trapped. So after this innocuous looking 4h4, Gain a uh, black could go wrong very quickly here. Um, probably the one that uh, causes me the most grief is um, a variation in the Philidor defense. So, after all of this, which is relatively standard, I believe, um, here white needs to play bishop d5 and then um, give up the bishop pair, but still having a fairly strong position. Um, however, in an endless number of blitz games, I've instead played bishop b3, greedily trying to preserve the two bishops, and after c5, which comes with tempo, the nice retreat, c4, the bishop is trapped over on the b3 square. So it's just a kind of tactical motif to watch out for in the opening, whether this bishop can get uh, boxed in Okay, so returning to the game after um, b5, Shane continues with knight c3, not wasting more time preserving the bishop. And after bishop takes a, uh, b, uh, bishop takes, b takes a4, um, black is uh, objectively winning. There's really no compensation for the whole piece. So just, however, Shane decides to fight on and. Um, make the game, um, keep the game going, and uh, see what he could get from it. So there's this sort of interesting dichotomy here, so c3, knight of 6 castles. Um, black can probably take this pawn, I imagine. I can't see an immediate refutation. Um, but instead, uh, black decides to just develop with uh, bishop g4, pinning the knight. Just see that. D3 just defending the pawn now. So there's always a bit of a question when you're down a lot of material in a game and you're um, starting to continue. Um, one of your options is to just play as aggressively as possible, um, try to attack the enemy king and hope that your opponent makes a mistake allowing you to, um, to get back in. One is to try and set up um, 
basically cheapos and hope your opponent uh, misses mason one or um, misses a pin or however it goes. And the third option, which I think is probably the soundest, is to just continue playing the game as normally as possible and try and uh, develop your pieces and allow your opponent the time to make mistakes instead of giving them very transparent threats to, uh, to rebuff. Okay, so here after d4, cd4, cd4, we already see that uh, white has now got a fairly good center. I think development's relatively even, um, but white is slightly ahead in that fact as well because their king is already castled. And here, um, Black decided to take another pawn. Knight takes e4. So there was a quick response here, which was queen c2, four keep the two knights. After bishop takes f3, queen takes c6 check with the intermezzo, king f8, g f3. Um, White has uh, gained some material back. Instead, the show continued with uh, d5. And here, um, obviously, if e takes d5, queen takes d5, allows the same sort of double attack. So instead, um, Andrew continued with d takes e6, d takes, sorry, knight e5, followed by d takes e6, f takes e6. And now already, Black's position is starting to look a tiny bit suspicious. Um, obviously, Black is still completely winning just due to the um, material situation. But at the same time, it is uh, sort of dangerous to have your king so open, potentially. The two pawns on the sort of hanging pawn structure on d6 and e6 isn't enormously stable and can potentially get attacked in the future. Game black is still not in the greatest shape with regards to development. However, again, with steady hand, uh, this could probably be guys home for full point. So after f takes e6, um, And there is the potential uh, opportunity for black to slip up with um, move knight takes f3, or by g takes f3, just attacking the two pieces here. It's one way that um, white might be able to regain material. So after bishop b6, just gaining a temple on the queen. The queen should go to probably a safe square like. Um, I don't know, maybe b8. Um, however, it stays on the d file, d7, gaining a tempo on the knight in a4. So after showing post b3, black makes the decisive mistake of the game, which is castles. It's an excellent moment to spot the tactic. Um, if you want to just take a second and calculate it through, and uh, unpause the video when you're done. Okay. So, the decisive move which Shane found here is knight takes e5. There is a very simple threat here. d takes e5, queen takes d7, wins the queen. If the queen goes somewhere else, running out of the um, attack from the knight, then the knight can simply capture the bishop on g4. And if you count the material, white has three minor pieces, whereas black has two. Probably one of the more resilient tries is queen takes a4. But here, um, queen takes g4 is an option. And after queen e8, queen takes e4, d takes e5. 
this is, uh, I think, White is already doing well, and at least the material um, has been regained. However, the continuation of the game to knight takes c5 was bishop takes d1. Knight takes d7. A large number of dogs somewhere in the local area. I'm not entirely sure in aid of what particular um, it's ridiculous. Okay, so after knight takes d7, um, black team bishop takes bishop e2, which is an intermezzo to try and move the bishop out of danger. But after rook f e1, black needs to play really um, bishop d3. Something like that, and just uh, potentially see this exchange. I think with the two central pawns, black should at least have uh, some compensation here and be able to play on. However, uh, there is a sort of principle of two mistakes, um, which I think is something uh, Boris Gelfand refers to. Generally, after you make one mistake, they, they tend to come in pairs. And here, black played the drastic rook takes f2. But this is simply met by a backwards bishop move. Bishop takes f2. Knight takes, king takes f2. And here, white has a full extra rook. And um, the rest of the game is fairly simple. Let's we'll move the knight out of the way. Check, king moves back, bishop f6, rook moves out of the way with the tempo, bishop b5, g3, it just sort of creates some luft for the king, um, protects the h2 pawn as well. It's a sort of difficult construction for black to meaningfully attack with the pieces they have left. After rook f5, knight c8, king f7, knight takes d6. Um, white is forcing uh, an exchange of pieces. Again, when you're up material, you want to exchange pieces. Just uh, simplify the position so that the extra material is normally more telling. The rook f6, the only way to defend the pawn. Knight c5, king e7. Again, it's just continuing to attack this weak pawn on uh, the e6 square. And now after rook d6, king retreats, again exchanging another pair of rooks, king of 6, a4, and here black resigned. There really aren't enough pieces left to um, generate counterplay. So that was a great fighting game from Shane, and I sort of wanted to show some swashbuckling games from... Um, the sort of CD and E teams, as well as the, uh, instead of just having um, all the games by a kind of uniformish standard of players. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a uh, really nice example of sort of, even if you make an early mistake, if you fall into an opening trap, you know, you can try to play a normal game. Again, if your opponent plays accurately, they will win. But your opponent isn't guaranteed to play accurately, and if you draw the game out and create possibilities, opportunities for them to go wrong, seize any blunders that turn up, um, you can have a win like this, which is uh, much happier than a uh, loss like this. Anyway, thank you for watching, I will see you next time.